Kyle, my first question is, what were you thinking during that? <laughs> Let's just get right to it. Yeah, you know what? Let, let's cut the small talk. Yeah. Um, yeah, what was I thinking? Um, I was thinking way too much and way too little all at the same time. Um, this this game uh, chewed me up and spit me out. I don't think that was any uh, that was pretty obvious to everybody who watched. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to assume you're you're talking about uh, the beautiful mistress that was week three. Um, yeah, who cares about the, week four? Week four doesn't yeah. matter. You know, yeah. Week four? <laughs> hey, I got booted off. I got booted off the show. Details, details. That's right. That's week right. three, though. Um, yeah, I definitely. Uh, I was in a very interesting position in the house where I felt that um, alliances were the, the, that I were in were already kind of talking about turning on each other. I felt that they were shaky at best. I was in this position of power. There was so many question marks um, surrounding uh, surrounding who was with who and where did the numbers lie and everything like that. And um, I had a few people who were really close to me who uh, I chose to listen to more so than other people in the house. And that was a big time downfall where in a house that was as fluid as BB Can 10 has been so far, where there have been alliances changing so much, I really limited myself to the information that I used to make my decisions. I, I thought... I got paranoid. I got bit by the paranoia bug. It was one of those things. Um, I thought, okay, I know that I can trust X, Y, and Z. So I'll only listen to X, Y, and Z versus if I had have gotten the perspectives of everybody in the house, I would have been able to make some more, uh, some more appropriate decisions for my game. Um, yeah. I have to tell you, Kyle, I've been covering reality TV for 20 years and I have never seen an HOH like that. It seems like you were actively targeting your allies uh, Moose, Stephanie, Josh, uh, did you just not want to play the game with your friends? <laughs> yeah, great question. Um, I definitely, I de the thing was, it's like, I really kind of believed that the people who you're aligned with, they have the most ammunition against you. They have, you know, they're the people who pose the biggest threats to you. And if they're already talking about turning on you, um, then you're in this weird position where it's like, okay, I don't necessarily know if they actually have my best interest in mind, but I'm the one in the position of power. So maybe it's one of those things where I have to be the one to take the first shot. And that obviously proves to always be the messiest, uh, the messiest way of doing it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I just, I, I was very much aligned with a lot of people in the house, whether they were just individual alignments or in, in groups. Um, and I felt like either way, I was going to have to burn some bridges this week. So I wanted to go and burn the bridges that I felt could be the most detrimental to my game um, down the road. Do you regret winning a Joe Big time. Yep. I wish I had have scooted a little, uh, two inches farther, um, yep. off that, uh, off that edge. It was an HOH that, uh, between you and me, I didn't want to win. Um, I was sitting very well protected in the house. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, you know, anytime I go into a competition, you know, I want to try my best. I want to make it as far as I can. Um, but I also, it was tough to not make that look obvious that I was going, trying to go off the edge. And I just tried to give it a little extra oomph than I did in practice. But I think the fake snow created just <laughs> enough traction that it slowed me down that little yeah. bit. And, uh, and I ended up scoring the literally a perfect score. And I was, I was definitely like, I wasn't happy about uh, the fact that I was going to have to be the burn bridge or the, the bridge burner uh, this week, for sure. You said that you are a super fan of the show. I think you said that Love to uh, Arissa. Uh, if you watched your week of power back on TV, what would you think? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna uh, be a few. I'd say it's gonna be a few months before I watch that week back. Uh, you know, I got I got to decompress from the whole situation. I like the honesty. I like the honesty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, as a fan, I would I would definitely. Uh, it's it's so interesting because it's like from the fan perspective, looking at that week, I understand how everyone's like, "What the hell is this guy doing?" Like this guy is absolutely just. It's almost like he's picking names out of a hat of of uh, the people that he's aligned with. He's like, "Oh, let's just see." Uh, you know how? Oh, Josh. Oh, that's yeah, even bad I for mean, my game. Yeah, throw that guy. You know. Very entertaining, um, though. I mean, it was very entertaining to watch. Um, I, I, I'm glad. I'm glad. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, the dynamics in the house are so different. It's so like, I, you know, I truly did make decisions that I thought were best for my game and the, the games of the people that I thought I could trust the most. Um, but, uh, you know, hey, hindsight's always 2020. Perfect. I'm going to start whipping through these because we don't have too much um, time left. Okay, sounds uh, good. Yes. Uh, so Gino decided to put you up and he was your ally. Do you feel yeah. like that was just a Carmen coming back on that call to call you? Because like, you know, your friends and he put you up and like your whole thing was putting up your friends. So yes. was it sweeter coming from Gino? Um, yeah, it definitely. I, it's a game move that I love and I respect. Um, I think that it was the right move for Gino's game. But uh, it was I, I said to him when I was leaving, I said, if it was going to be anybody, I'm glad it was you. Um, I was kind of hoping it'd be more like a final four. He takes me out if that was going to be the case. But uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm glad that it was Gino and not somebody else.
Gino said that he did it to sort of carry favor with uh, the other people in the house to do what they wanted. Um, yeah. Is that even going to matter? Like getting rid of you, like he's so connected to you that like getting rid of you, I still feel like he's, you know, he's still going to be targeted. Gino, Gino's always going to be a threat target in that house. You know, he's in a showman's. He's a super strong guy. He's very like socially aware. And he's, he's also really smart. I think that's the thing that gets lost in translation a lot is Gino's like sharp as attack. Um, so Gino is going to have a target on his back going forward. Definitely taking me out of the game. It does allow him the opportunity to reestablish relationships and numbers and kind of be the one to drive the ship a little bit. Um, because it, a player like Gino, it's tough. You can't really fade into the background and hope yeah. that the target leaves your back. This was his opportunity to like rebuild a camp around himself and, uh, and Jace as well. I want to talk about your relationship with Marty. What do you think yeah. about him? He was the one that brought up the idea of putting up Josh, but then flipped on you and actually aligned with Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know the the game. My personal relationship with Marty, love him to death. He's a fantastic human being. Uh, we shared a bed night one, and and uh, we definitely were there for each other on a personal level more so than I think a lot of other people in the house. Um, on a game level, though, it was very strange how he approached the whole situation. Um, you want to talk about? I was I got bit by the paranoid bug. I think uh, I think Marty was patient zero. Um, he uh, he just had this idea that Josh was coming for him a hundred percent. Josh is coming for him. Josh is coming for him. And if Josh is coming for him, we're really tight. It probably means Josh is coming for me. Um, so, uh, so I, I decided to take that shot, but, um, the fact that then after he thought that I was playing him, then went and worked with other people in the house and then flipped the vote, then lied about it, then came back to me. And I said, listen, Marty, even after all this, I still want to work with you and said, no, I'm a man of my word. And I'm going to now work with other people. I just <laughs> I was like, Marty, 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 like, what are you doing man? Many people thought you were uh, the Kyle Moore that was on last season. What was that attention like? Um, it was uh, like in the house? Just in general. Yeah, just in general. Like, um, you know, how did that influence your decision to try out for the show this year? Like the idea that you were on, you know, last time. Yeah. Yeah. So th this, uh, this, um, the Kyle Moore mix up was one of those things that like, I always loved the big brother, but I never would think to apply. Like it just never really seemed like something that was, uh, like super up my alley. And I mean, uh, granted at this point, uh, you know, I think the uh, writing's on the wall there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, surreal to like go from just you know what a butterfly effect kind of thing that just because somebody from alberta has the same name as me and looks similar that i've been able to go through this unbelievably you know transformative uh experience and and play this game that i adore and it's just it is so so neat so no it was pretty funny there was a few people in the house who did know me from last year uh because they were super fans of the show yeah. and they knew that i was the the kyle moore too um so that was that was pretty cool to have those like surface level conversations with them when they were like i thought i recognized you that was pretty neat uh you are a mental health uh, advocate what did yeah. big brother canada teach you about uh, about your work really moving forward yeah um i think the biggest thing i think it taught me a lot of personal lessons in terms of uh, my mental health because i um coming into the house i was at a really great mental part of my uh, mental state my mental state was super healthy um and uh while i was in there like I took my lumps, you know, there was days where in the course of two hours, I go from the lowest of lows to the highest of highs. Um, and I just kind of realized that there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on the day to day in my own life to maintain my mental health and to, um, and to kind of prepare myself for anything. Cause it just like in, in the game in life, anything can happen. Um, so, but it also gave me a wonderful perspective because for 27 days, I got to talk with 16 people from across the country, from different backgrounds and, and everything cultures about mental health and how they saw it and it gave me and my work it just gave me that was the one thing that I did listen to everybody and, and use their information <laughs> right. was in terms of this is the stuff I'm going to take back to my work and I'm, I'm so thankful for it and last question is how do you want people to remember this Kyle Moore well I want people to remember this Kyle Moore is good tv uh and I want them to uh and I want them to remember me as uh as the the kid who maybe wasn't the best uh, BB Cam player but who's one hell of a mental health advocate I love it thank you so much Kyle I appreciate it, Mertz. Thanks, buddy.